that are there. We go. It was me. I, I got to turn my mic on. Uh, in your bulletin extension, I'd like to bring your attention. We have a voters meeting, which will happen this Tuesday. Um, we're voting on two important things. We have, as it's listed in the bulletin extension, the budget, and then we are going to vote on, if we're going to call our director of parish uh, music, and all that information is on the window seals, so please take a look at that. On the other side, we have uh, the wildfire. They're having a fundraiser for a baseball game at the gate for the Gateway uh, Grizzlies, and that is on the 12th. So please look at that. If you would uh, like to buy tickets, please contact Karen. Her phone number and all that great stuff is right there for you. Um, you got the save of the date for the VPS. Keep that in mind. And then not in our bulletin extension, in our hallway next to the um, one of the trophy cases, there is this huge table of books. Our teachers have cleaned out some of their classrooms, so there are free books for anybody who wants to take a look, browse. There's a nice sign that says, take as many as you want. So please, if you are interested, take a look at that. With that, we're going to follow the bulletin for our service. Let us open with our opening song. Give and 
Let us stand. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Dear beloved, I have good news. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I will sing of the steadfast love and justice to you, O Lord. I will make music. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. <clears throat> For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer, hear their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heaven, Leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father. For you liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for our readings. The first reading for the seventh Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 1. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew. James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the son of James. 
All these, with one accord, were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120 and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and his bowels gushed out and became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that that field was called in their own language, Akadalama, that is, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who had accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, put forward two. Joseph called Barabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these to you, one of these two you would have us choose to take the place in this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast, they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle comes to us from 1 Peter, the 4th and 5th chapter. <clears throat> Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trials when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. But let none of you suffer as murderer or a thief or an evildoer or a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous are scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brothers through the brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand in honor of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John the 17th chapter. Then Jesus had spoken these words and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son 
so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you, and I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them, and I am, no, I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated.
Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, bless us and keep us. Humble us as we stand before you and know that it is your mercy and your love which sustains and keeps us in the midst of all that takes place. Strengthen our faith so that we may live by your grace and strengthen our faith so that we may have and believe and hold on to the gifts that you have given to us in Christ our Lord. To this end, use the words that flow from these lips to proclaim your great mercy in Christ Jesus. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I get to be here because you guys decided to sit so far away and up there, uh, especially on this beautiful Saturday evening. Our readings tonight open up to us what the church is, and who Christ is, and how he connects himself to God, and then in connecting himself to God, how he connects us to God. And we get to really see the immensity of what God is in and through Christ. But before we get there, we get to go back to after the ascension. We celebrated the ascension on Wednesday, And we celebrated that our Lord, in the presence of his disciples and many other witnesses, truly, physically, bodily, arose, ascended, was lifted up, was carried out of sight into the highest heavens, and he now fills the heavens with his glory, his might, his power, and his divineness. And so we have this promise that our Lord has gone to heaven. This is what we creeds. This is what we believe as scripture has laid it out for us. And we see that because Christ has come, he was delivered to us. He was born of the blessed Virgin Mary. He took on our flesh. He carried our sins, goes to the cross on our behalf, becomes our substitute, goes to death, goes to our grave, and he arises, showing us that in him that we too get to have the resurrection. But then with the ascension, he shows that we too will have heaven. And so he leaves. And the great joy that I have with the disciples, I I, I love the disciples, because so many times they they, they say and do silly things, which makes me feel good, because the things that I miss, the things that I think I know, and it takes my eight-year-olds to tell me the the truth and reveal the the depths of, of faith, The disciples missed so many things. And you know Jesus was frustrated. Guys, if you would just listen, if you would just believe, if you would just trust me. And you know the disciples, okay, Jesus. Well, you know, and it goes over their head. But not until after the ascension does the Holy Spirit come. And this is what we'll celebrate in Pentecost. The Holy Spirit coming, opening their minds. We hear Peter, um, he gives these faithful sermons. He points to what the cross is. He points to the fact that it is the the Jews, the world, sinful people, us included, are the reason that he went to the cross. And so we have the disciples and they go back to the upper room and we hear that they are named. And we hear that uh, Judas must be replaced. And Matthias is the one by casting lots fills his place. We see that this is the operation of the church. We see that the mission, we see that the ministry must take place. It must continue. Even when you have the possibility of unfaithful pastors, who is in control? Well, of course, we immediately say God. Immediately we say that it is his word. Uh, Luther even made this big statement that if Satan himself came and said the words of institution and communed you. You get to have all faith and all trust that because it's God's word and God's work, it is what it says, the very body and blood of Christ. And so we have in the uh, first reading, we have God taking care of his church. We have God lifting up and saying, Matthias is the one that shall be the new apostle and they will be sent. They will be the ones that will spread the gospel, the promise that Christ would come, die, and rise again for all will be spread to the ends of the world. 
We still live in that mission. We still live in that ministry for the very same things that Peter, Paul, all the disciples listed, the things they preached, the things they brought to the known world are the very same things we are still talking about, the same things that we are still wrestling with, the things that we are still finding comfort in are the very same things that were spoken by the disciples. And again, this points to the fact that God does not change. His word, his promises, his gifts, they do not change, for they are the things that have always been promised and delivered. And so we as the church get to receive the timeless gifts of the promise of what happened on the cross. We heard it in holy absolution. Your sins are forgiven. And then we in all boldness get to believe that it really is ours. Which flows us right into the epistle lesson where we have uh, Peter simply telling us, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trials when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. We gather here in the midst of his holy house to hear his word, to receive, to thank and praise him, to be in his presence for the gifts that he has given. And we leave this sanctuary, this place of comfort, and we return back to the world. We return back to the hardships, the trials, tribulations, the problems, the sufferings, the malice, the brokenness of not just our body, but our relationships and the things that are found in this world. And what makes us different that we, could go, we should go out and think that we are immune to what the world has, does, and is? Why would we think that we would be immune to messing up and being the agents of malice, of agents of trials, hurts, and pains? We, too, get to look at ourselves and see that we are fallen, that we are corrupted. And when we start recognizing how far we have fallen from what has been commanded and demanded, how far we have fallen from the grace that is promised, we see that it is something that we cannot do. We cannot, by our own power, strength, might, we cannot pick ourselves up by our bootstraps and carry us ourselves all the way back to where God is. But it takes him to once again fix our eyes upon what has been given in and through Christ. It takes God to pick us up and carry us and bring us and say, this is for you so that you can bear all things, so that you can live knowing that your salvation is secure in what has taken place. For the Lord that died on the cross went to the tomb and now sits in heaven, has dominion over all things. And because he is the guy in control, because it is God, the one who claims and states that it is my steadfast love that rests upon your life, we get to go into the life of hurt the life of pain, the life of broken relationships, actually with joy, knowing that we have the healing, knowing that we have the promise of life forever, that we know that we have the true mercy of Christ delivered for us. And it is in his hands that we get to be held, protected, and carried through this life. But how did we get into this hand? How did we get to where we are protected? We have God, our Father, knowing all things. He has given us to Christ. He has said, you are mine, and I give you to my Son, who will cover you in his perfection, in his righteousness, in his completed works. That's what you have in baptism. For in baptism you are clothed in Christ's righteousness so that you get to stand before God never pointing and saying, look how good I am, God. Look how great all the things I have done. But we stand before God and we say, for Christ's sake, love, protect, keep, and hold me. 
Know me for what has been done in and through the cross as it has been laid and given to me. This is what our Lord says as he lifted up his face and spoke to God. And he connects himself and says that the Father and the Son are one as I have connected myself to you. How amazing is that? The God of infinite, God of God's light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, comes and doesn't just dwell with us to show up and say, hey guys, I'm God, I'm here, I'm going to fix some stuff, I hope you make it. But he attaches himself in the flesh and says, all that I have, all that is mine, all that has been given to me by the Father, I give to you. And I bestow upon you so that you will know true love, so that you will know true peace, so that you will know true comfort. And it is in these things that you get to bear all things together as one body, his body. That's why we come here, to hear who we are, to hear what we have been made, the very body of Christ, the very saints, his people, his sheep, and we get to graze and live in the comfort of the pasture that he has given to us. But again, we have St. Peter who says, be sober-minded, sober, be sober for the devil roams around like a roaring lion, seeking those who he can devour. That's a scary thing. I stand at six foot four. I think I'm a big guy. And, you know, I have this picture of a lion. I'm like, oh, it's a big cat. But when you stand in front of this massive animal that can truly devour you, that is who and what the devil is. And he seeks to devour your faith. He seeks to pull you away from the comfort, the gift, the peace, the love of what has been given to you in Christ. And dear people, it is easy, for we are easily distracted in this life. We are distracted by the shiny things, by the unshiny things, by the mundane, by the spectacular. We are pulled and pushed so simply. And again, St. Peter says it simply. Do not be surprised at the fiery trials when they come, for you are being tested. But who sees you through all these tests? Who sees you through the hurts and the harms of this life? It is your Lord who has promised to always be with you. Let us trust. Let us hope. Let us live in the work that has already been completed and done. And because it is completed, because it is done, we get to live knowing that life forever is ours. And so let the world rage. Let the hurts, trials, pains, sufferings of this world have its way with us. It cannot overcome what God has completed and the love in Christ that we have. This is yours in the faith created and sustained by God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Together, let us stand and confess our faith as it is found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to our Father in heaven who keeps us in his name and hears our prayer for the sake of Jesus. Lord God, ruler of all, 
protect, and defend your church from every attack of the devil who prowls and seeks to devour. Where he tempts, strengthen your people to resist his seductions and terrors. Where he gains a foothold with false teaching or ungodly living, call them to repentance and holiness. And where he incites enemies against your word and church, preserve your saints in the faith so that they might rejoice to share in the sufferings of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, as you provide Matthias to replace the departed Judas, to provide for your church pastors and missionaries today, so the gospel of Jesus Christ might be proclaimed to all nations. Protect them and their families from every attack of the evil one. Console them in trouble and keep them steadfast in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, faithful creator, remember all who suffer illness, affliction, and injury, pain, and suffering. We pray this day especially for Doris, Dana, Pat, Marie, Dorothy, Bob, Doris, Nancy. We pray for Doris, Herbert, Tom, Jeff. We also pray for Elijah, Beulah, Marilyn, Norma, Gina, Joe, Barb, Dennis, Tessa, Hal, Dale, Larry, Kathy, Grace, Buddy. We continue to pray for Diana, Dakota, Tom, Jim, Nancy, Chris. We also pray for Harper, Norma, Charlene, Garrett, Gary, Elaine, Kelly, Leona, Eloise, Peggy, Alfreda, Alicia, Marguerite, Amy, Mike. We also pray for Ron and Mona, Bill, Natalie, Clara, Craig, Steve, Dulcy, and Karen. We also pray for the family and the congregation of Pastor Schultz. Strengthen, protect, and send forth your love in the midst of their mourning. Grant healing and recovery according to your will. Strengthen their faith and protect them from every assault of the evil one upon body, mind, and soul. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Father, your son prayed for his people before his death, that they might be sustained in life and faith. Strengthen us as we live by that very grace in which our Lord has won for us. Open our eyes that we may see and behold your gifts and be sustained in and through what you give to us. Lord, in your mercy. O King of kings, you arise to protect your people and scatter your enemies. Have mercy on all those who serve or have served in the armed forces as your instruments for our peace and safety. Protect them from all evil. Sustain them in time of anxiety and violence, and grant them repentant hearts that rejoice in the peace won by Christ in his victory for them. Lord, in your mercy. Our Father, your Son prayed that your people might be one, even as you and he are one. As you have gathered your people into the one faith by one baptism, so grant them a united confession of your truth as they receive Jesus in the faith that you have created and sustained through their baptism. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, as the first Christians devoted themselves to prayer and worship following the departure of Christ Jesus by means of his glorious ascension, preserve us in the same until we are raised up with all the saints to your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. You may be seated as we gather the offering.
Let us stand. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Guilty of disgrace, but you do.